Here's a quick video for going through some of the basics uh, when it comes to multiplying radicals. Let's first talk about multiplying these two monomials. We want to notice that we have one term here and one term here. And think about what we do when we multiply these monomials. We look at the coefficients and we multiply those together. And then we look at the variables and see do we have any variables that we can combine. The two x's we made into the x squared. This y did not have another y, so we're just bringing this one y along with our answer. We want to approach multiplying radicals in a very similar way. Think about first these numbers that are on the outside. These are the coefficients, so we're going to do 3 times 4 to get 12. And then we'll look at the numbers that we have in the radical. These two radicals, since they're both in a square root, we can multiply those together. And 5 times 2x will give us 10x, and that will go inside of a radical because these two factors, or these three factors we're multiplying together, are inside radicals. So the product is also going to be inside of a radical. And so what I'm often thinking about, it's, it's sort of an informal phrase that I have, but the outsiders go with the outsiders, the insiders go with the insiders. That helps me remember that when it comes to multiplication, we can definitely multiply radicals together. They do not need to be like radicals or like terms. We can multiply them together. Just remember, outsiders multiply together and insiders multiply together. Let's check out this example. So what do we have here? We are multiplying one term by two terms. This hopefully looks like a situation where we would want to do distributive property. That's exactly what we would do here. We would multiply the 3x times 5y. And as we do that multiplication, we're back to thinking about multiply the coefficients together, the 3 times the 5. And then can we put the variables together? So there's our first multiplication. The second multiplication, 3x times negative 2, always we're cautious with the signs. That's going to give us a negative 6x. And we multiplied the number parts, and then we looked at do we have variables that we can combine. It's a similar situation with multiplying these radicals. Observe that we have one term, and remember, terms are separated by adds and subtract. So even though we've got an outside number and an inside number, a radical, it's still just one term. And in parentheses, we have two terms. So it's going to be distributive property. And with each multiplication that we do, we're going to remember to multiply the outsiders together and multiply the insiders together. So the first multiplication, 3 times 4 is 12 on the outside. And 2 times 3 is 6 inside the radical. When it comes to this second multiplication, this negative 2 is outside of a radical. So our multiplication is going to be 3 times the negative 2 for a negative 6 outside of the radical. And this 2 is inside of a radical. And we did not have another radical part to this term back here. So we're just bringing the radical 2 along as our insider. The negative 6 is outside. The 2 is inside. And there's our answer. It is time for you to try a problem. This is the problem for you to try. It's a little more involved than the one we just looked at, but it's the same idea. It's going to be distributive property. And just remember, multiply the outsiders together and multiply the insiders together. So pause the video, work out this problem, and come back and we'll go through the answer together. OK, so it's one term in front multiplied by two terms in parentheses. It is definitely distributive property. With this first multiplication, the outsiders multiplied together. Negative 2x times positive 3 will give us negative 6x on the outside. And inside the radical, it's 5 times 2, so we have radical 10. The second multiplication, again, cautious with the sign. So our outsiders, we're multiplying a negative 2x by a negative x. And that's giving us a positive 2x squared. The insiders, 5 times 3y, gives us 15y inside the radical. So we did the distributive property. We did the multiplication. But at some point, we want to have a way to feel confident that we have a final answer. So there are a couple questions that you're going to 
get accustomed to asking yourself at the end of any of these multiplying radical problems and really at the end of lots of radical problems you want to ask yourself first are the radicals simplified so in this radical we have a 10 can we simplify this radical and that's really thinking about the factors of our radicand if we can find pairs of factors it means we can simplify that radical so this 10 the factors are only a 2 and a 5, one of each, no pairs, so that 10 cannot be simplified. And same situation with this 15y. The factors are 3, 5, and y, no pairs, so that radical, it's also simplified already. That's the first question. The second question is, do we have any like terms we can combine? So when we're thinking about like terms, we're looking at our radicands. If the radicands match, then we'll be able to combine these like terms and these are not like terms so the radicals are simplified we cannot combine any like terms and that's how we know that we're finished with this problem let's look at another example it's again one term multiplied by two terms we're going to be doing the distributive property with each multiplication we are multiplying the outside numbers together and the inside numbers together so this first multiplication do you see it's going to give us 10 radical 18 and our second multiplication will give us negative 35 radical 12 and at this point we're going to ask ourselves these two questions first question can we simplify these radicals and yes we can simplify both of these radicals so when it comes to simplifying the radicals I like to look at the prime factors if we start with this radical 18 the prime factors are 2 3 and 3 and here's the pair of factors that we can take out of the radical a pair of threes inside the radical means we're gonna bring one three outside of the radical and when we're bringing a factor outside of the radical we have to multiply it to any other factors that we have outside the radical. So 1, 3 is coming out of the radical, multiply it to that 10, will give us a 30, and this 2 is because we have a leftover in our radical. Leftover 2 there is turning into this 2 leftover in the radical. So we simplified 10 radical 18 to equal 30 radical 2. Let's simplify this other frac radical, rather. It's uh, 12 is the radicand. If we look at the prime factors, 2 times 2 times 3, we've got a pair of 2's, so we're going to be able to bring 1, 2 out of the radical to multiply to the negative 35, and that will leave us with negative 70 radical 3, because of this 3 left over in the radical. So we simplified the radicals. The next question is, are they like terms? they're not like terms the first term is radical 2 the second term has radical 3 so they're not like terms and we know now that we are finished and there's our answer